god. Maybe I can fly. No, no! Gods too must stay on the path, I promise you. Look, don't be mad, but I've seen those blades of yours before. They were under the house when I was hiding. Is that why you never let me down there? Where did they come from? They are my burden, from a life that is behind me. Well, they're in my life too now, and I'd like to hear that story. Those days are dead. To relive them is needless. How can it be needless if it's the truth? One day, you will understand. I'll take your word for it. Was next to Mother's Garden this whole time. No wonder we can never get in there.
Brock and Sindri the Hold Your Brothers? Aye. But they're dwarves, aren't they? Aye. And Hold Your are sprites of the forest. Aye. The beautiful, seductive sprites of the forest. So why would you call Brock and Sindri the Hold Your Brothers? Oh, well, I now realize this would be a wholly inappropriate story for young and innocent ears. <sighs> Whatever. Nicely done.
What do you think, Mimir? What does Baldur want with us? Well, let's look at what we know. Baldur is Odin's finest tracker bar none. If he wants you, you have to consider the possibility that Odin wants you. And as for what Odin wants, on this I have some expertise. What could we have that Odin does? He's like the king of gods. Of the Aesir, aye. But his reach is not unlimited. And where he cannot reach, he is preoccupied with going. He certainly tortured me enough about it over the years. to go where he can't reach. Are you saying he's trying to get to Jotunheim too? Aye. It ranks among his foremost obsessions. But that doesn't make any sense, Mimir. Oh? When did I stop making sense? You're saying Baldur tracked us down to find the way to Jotunheim. But that was before we knew Jotunheim is where we needed to go. That's crazy. Except for one thing. You are headed for Jotunheim. So he was right. I'm so confused. Well then, clearly you've been listening. Okay. Tell me again how Odin knew we were going to Jotunheim before we did. Odin is extremely clever, you see. Nearly as clever as he thinks he is. And he's a collector of prophecies. If it's about the future, he adds it to his collection. Helps him style himself as all-seeing and all-knowing. But of course, the idea is control. Control of the future, control of his fate. He'd control every realm of every land in every world if he could. Every potential pocket of resistance, he seeks to eliminate. Even if you've never posed a threat before, he may think one day you might. So you see, it's not important how he knew before you did. It's important that he was right. Amir, what else did the serpent tell you when you spoke? Kinda sounded important. I'm sure it's nothing. He just said the boy seemed familiar to him. Me? That's impossible. Don't I quite agree. Unless, perhaps, he refers to something yet to be. It is said that when Jormungandr and Thor battle at Ragnarok, their clash so violently shakes the Tree of Life that it splinters, casting the serpent backward through time, even before his own birth. What? That is madness. Well, I did say not to concern yourself. Why is Odin so desperate to find a way into Jotunheim anyway? He's convinced the giants hold the key to changing his fate when Ragnarok comes. They are the Aesir's oldest enemies after all, and it's their army that's supposed to do him in in the end. But more than that, he covets their gifts of prophecy. He wants to know what they know and see what they see. So much suffering could have been avoided if his insatiable curiosity was not so much stronger than his wisdom. What do you mean? Ah. Remind me to tell you why they call him the Lord of the Hang. Why do they call Odin the Lord of the Hang? That refers to a modest example of Odin's thirst for knowledge. The time he spent nine days a dead man. Hung himself by the neck from Yggdrasil's branches, put his spear through his own side and bled down into the Well of Destiny. He roamed the realms of the dead and plundered the world tree of its secrets, until I think quite rightly it got fed up with him and sent him back to the land of the living. Did I not mention he was barking mad?
Another name. Air! It's as if they've been made into a memorial to the Valkyries. I should stay out of your family business. I just don't get why Thor abusing your creation would drive you and Brock apart. It wasn't your fault. Well, I'm glad you forgive our part in that. But when you've witnessed that much devastation and loss, and you know it couldn't have happened without you, it's simply not so easy to forgive yourself or your partner. We tried to make up for it, of course, but that's a whole other sad story as as I'm sure you know. I do? Atreus, enough. All right. I'm feeling creative today. Well, don't buy anything on my account. I can't figure out. Odin wants to prevent Ragnar. But the Serpent's already been there and seen it. So hasn't he already failed? Beats a tricky thing, lad. And Odin's just arrogant enough to think he can get the best of it. Fate is another lie told by the gods. Nothing is written that cannot be unwritten. On that, brother, you and the Old Father may just agree. Even if he can't prevent Ragnarok, he still hopes to learn enough details to influence the outcome. Remind me later to tell you about the wolves. <gasps>
these bones pulse with magic. It must be Golvi. Could we... Could we just hold on to it? Maybe we'll find the rest of them. This spirit lies to you, boy. How would you know? I have known many spirits. They are all liars. This one is different. I know it. You know very little. Follow me, Atreus. I'm on my way. To the spirit to keep its word is foolish, boy. But if there's even a chance, don't you want to see Mom again? Of course I. She is gone, Atreus. You must accept this. I do, but to see her again, just one more time. Why do you believe him? You do not know him or who he was. All of this is sinister. He wants to see someone he loved again. I... I understand how that feels. I don't think there's anything sinister about it. Hope is blinding your instincts, boy. Govi's bones. What will you say to her? To Govi? Your mother. What have you left unsaid? I... I guess... I just want to know if she's okay. She is dead, boy. I know that! I... You don't understand. Neither do you. Mir, why did you say Tyr felt responsible for what Odin did to the Giants? There was an incident shortly after the forging of Mjolnir, when Tyr arranged a diplomatic meeting between Odin and the Giant Kings. Well, this was when the Long War was young, when victory was still a thing dreamed of, and the Jotnar might have tipped the balance between Aesir and Vanir. Odin had persuaded Tyr that the hammer was merely a deterrent, a means to broker peace from a position of strength. Tyr was hopeful to convince all parties they would prosper best through peace. He knew the giants were deeply concerned about the hammer, a super weapon in hands they did not trust. But they trusted Tyr. Tyr always believed the best in people, and taking Odin at his word in his desire for peace, he brought the Raven King to Jotunheim. Uh, from there, things unraveled quickly. The giants anticipated Odin's trickery and exposed his true agenda to spy and steal their secret wisdom. With magics, they expelled Odin from their realm and cursed him never to return. Frustrated, Odin visited his fury upon the giants of Midgard. Thor unleashed Mjolnir's might upon any giant he could find. None could stand against the tide of slaughter that followed. And at last, it seems, with Tyr's aid, they retreated. The tower disappeared, no giants could be found in Midgard, and no man nor god has set foot in Jotunheim since. The final bone. Yeah. We might as well return them to the spirit. Maybe he will keep his word. I know and... she's not coming back, okay? I know. I just. Never mind. I just gotta return the bones.
I wonder why Goofy's bones are all over the place. Desecration, typically. Pieces of scattered corpse make for a piss poor soul. No hope for Valhalla or Helheim when your arm's on one beach and your head's on another. Why not ask the spirit? I'm sure he will be forthcoming with answers. Collected the rest of your woman's corpse spirit. Show us this magic you have promised. Ah, oh, my sweet Gulvik, whole again. Rise, dear Gulvik, awaken, O oh powerful Gulvik! <laughs> she says she'll honor our request. Eldifagna. And reunite us? In Okay, you're right. Oh, almost there! <laughs> 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 we <laughs> Alright. Say it. I told you so. I told you so. You are naive, foolish boy. This is true as well. But do not take your disappointment out on me, boy. Take it as a lesson. Yes, sir.
of Valhalla, are they not? Glad to see you're paying attention, brother. You are correct. Valhalla, the great hall of the Ain Heriar, is their home within Asgard. But while there, they are subject to the scrutiny of the Allfather himself. And relations between the Valkyries and Odin were tense during my tenure as his advisor. Why? Well, that's an even longer story, lad. For now, why don't we look around for some clues? Hello? I don't think she can hear you, lad. The helms must only retain but a small portion of their owner. I'd wager the rest is in transit to Valhalla, to try and fix the mess left by their absence. Lemire, who is she? Gunnar, mistress of war. After any conflict, big or small, she would be first on the scene, sussing out the worthy spirits for a free trip to Valhalla. A gruesome task, but she took great pride in it. Any conflict? Impossible. It's true. She had help from her sisters, of course. But Gunnar was always first to arrive. Her judgment of the Fallen was unparalleled, and an invaluable resource to Odin. She was one of his favorites. This, my friends, is Kara. Now, Valkyries are volatile by nature, but Kara, the lass is Wild Storm personified. A Wild Storm? Aye, calm and collected. Then the air would shift and the fury of her storm would unleash. It was beautiful in a way, assuming you could find proper shelter. Her tears would cleanse the blood soaked battlefields. <laughs> <laughs> 